Well, good evening, good morning, whenever you're watching this. We are coming to you right from Golden One Center on the court. I am Kevin John. That is Matt George. You also know him as the Locked On Kings podcast host as well that you can tune in every day for your daily Kings content. Well, tonight the Kings gave us something that we haven't seen in six days. They got a victory and they lit the beam. But Matt, it did not come easy, especially in the first half. It looked like the Kings were afraid of winning three, or excuse me, of losing three in a row. But that third quarter, Matt, is something that I don't think I've seen from the Kings. Maybe one other time this year have I seen a third quarter where they just came out and literally punch the opponent in the mouth. Well, I think... It- the first half was less about what the Sacramento Kings were doing and more about what the Phoenix Suns were doing. The Phoenix Suns came out and they took full control of this game in every sense of the word. They had 42 points in the paint. They were shooting almost 60% from the field. They went into halftime shooting only 10% from three-point range and yet still leading by double digits. I mean, they dominated. Uh, Their assists were way higher than the Kings. Rebounds were way higher than the Kings. They were just dominating every facet of the game. And what stood out to me was multiple times when Mike Brown called a timeout in the first half to try and get control over things, you look at the faces of uh, Devin Booker. You look at the face of Chris Paul. You look at the faces of the Phoenix Suns, and there is just a stone-cold seriousness. Like, we belong here. We're the better team. We're going to show up. We don't care about the beam. We're going to handle our business. And what completely threw the Phoenix Suns off their game was the Sacramento crowd. I, saw, I thought as soon as the crowd got involved, Devin Booker got called for a technical foul. Chris Paul got called for a technical foul. Even Chris Paul's flopping a little bit energized this Kings crowd and, and lit their fire a little bit. And then Kevin Herter caught fire, and this place turned into pure pandemonium. Yeah, that third quarter is something we really haven't seen from the Kings, and we've seen offensive explosions over the course of this year. But this was an explosion tenfold. This arena was absolutely popping off. They broke the, the record for attendance tonight's building, uh, 18,151, I believe. Uh, which is pretty incredible, Uh, and it's just a a precursor to how ready this city is for the playoffs. You know, I want to go back to something. You talked about Mike Brown calling those timeouts and bringing his team over there. What I want to know is what Mike Brown said to his team in the locker room during halftime because whatever pep talk, whatever he told them, they flipped a switch in that third quarter. They cannot hit. You mentioned Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter obviously had been out the last three games, so he was making his return tonight in, what, over a week or somewhere around there. And he had 16 points in the third quarter, uh, was just connecting on any and everything that he was throwing up. And it was really good to see him getting into it as well and feeding off of this crowd right here. Uh, I, You know, it, obviously we know what Kevin can do with the three-point ball. We know what Kevin can do as far as spacing. We know what Kevin can do, you know, um, as far as just spreading the floor. But one of his best plays tonight, Matt, was a play he started on the defensive end right. and then uh, caused a turnover of the block, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And then he came down in transition and hit a three. So it was just Kevin Herter coming alive there in the third quarter. And – this audience, this these fans, I cannot talk about that enough. You mentioned it, 18151. That is the most fans, the, uh, well, the most fans that has ever been in here for a Kings game as far as that record. So I just want to bring clarification on that. That doesn't include concerts and other things. But at any rate, Matt, I nearly went deaf in there. And I guess my thing is, as the Kings looking ahead, the Magic number is now two, which they can do in their next two games here on their home court. Yeah, and that's the best case scenario. The reality is if the Kings handle their business and win against Utah, which they should if De'Aaron plays or if he doesn't play, they should handle their business and respond against Utah tomorrow night, regardless of it being the second night of a back-to-back. It's also the second night of a back-to-back for the Utah Jazz. So there's really no excuses. Defend your home floor, handle tomorrow night's game. There are scenarios where the Kings win tomorrow night if, if – um, teams in that set six seven uh, eight range lose on Sunday there is a chance that the Kings actually clinch on Sunday when they don't play but in reality we don't Kings want fans don't want that no we don't want that. <laughs> we want that we want the Kings to clinch with a win over the Minnesota Timberwolves in this building on Monday that's what everybody wants we certainly want the Sacramento Kings to clinch uh, before they head on the road to uh, to Portland you and I might be going to Portland if that's the scenario with which no disrespect to Portland but I don't want to go to Portland to watch the Kings clinch I want them to clinch inside this building then I'll happily go to Portland afterwards uh, uh, that's what everybody wants. That's what the city deserves for uh, them to clinch and break that 16-year playoff drought here in Sacramento in front of this fan base that showed once again why they're one of the best, if not the best, in all of professional sports tonight. 
Um, that's what we're all looking for. It's more than likely going to happen this weekend, which is really, really exciting. And the fact that, I mean, we know it's going to happen. Like, we, it's going to happen, but it still hasn't happened yet. So we're just itching for that moment when it finally does happen. And then I think we're really going to see the true emotions of the city come out. Yeah, it's more of a matter of when than if. And with that being said, uh, tomorrow night against Utah, obviously they struggled against Utah the last time they played, which was less than a week ago. Yep. But uh, De'Aaron Fox, obviously he is their uh, leader on the court. You, you saw him leave in the third quarter with that hamstring injury. Davion Mitchell came in and gave great minutes uh, for them. So depending on whether or not De'Aaron Fox is in the lineup tomorrow, the Kings clearly still have the firepower, the defensive power, and all the tools to still get the W and electrify this crowd who was, I don't know if they can be any more electrified than what we saw here tonight. Yeah, and I, I think we need to give a lot of credit to both Davion Mitchell and Harrison Barnes in particular, yeah. but the Sacramento Kings team as a whole for closing out this game. Yeah. The, the Suns still made a run, made a push, and made it a game in the fourth quarter, and the Kings, without their star, who they've leaned on heavily time in and time out with fourth quarter Fox, they didn't have that luxury, and they didn't need it. Harrison Barnes had some big shots. I thought Davion Mitchell did a great job running the offense, even if he wasn't necessarily scoring. They were sharing the rock. Kevin Herter, of course, was, was building on his 29 point performance performance so the Kings as a team secured this one tonight but we also did get some good news about De'Aaron Fox after the game we didn't get anything official about his status with his uh, right hamstring soreness but we were told by coach Mike Brown that Kings general manager Monty McNair told coach Brown after the game that uh, De'Aaron wanted to come back in wanted to play and it was the training staff and the team that actually held him back which is mm. smart we know De'Aaron if he can play if he can go he wants to play he absolutely wants to go. but this Kings team they're not only gearing up for a, a playoff run Kevin they're gearing up for a deep playoff run they have the expectation that they're going to be playing into the month of May so you want to protect your star want to make sure uh, he can be as healthy as possible hamstring injuries are no joke especially for a player like De'Aaron who relies so heavily on his legs and his speed so they made the precautious choice they chose to believe in the unit that was out there to secure the win and it, it paid off well, Matt, we already talked about it. The fact that the Kings have raised the expectations for everyone this year and exceeded the expectations and are playing so well, we a first-round exit would be a disappointment to all the Kings fans. So like Matt said, obviously anticipating a deep run in the playoffs. But I will say this. It would absolutely be a disappointment at this time, but there's very little the Sacramento Kings can do outside of being swept in the opening round that, that, <laughs> Whoa, that we don't, ruins th this season. Yeah. It makes this season not an amazing season regardless. Like even if the Sacramento Kings don't have the ex or don't have the the uh, luck or success that we want and expect in the playoffs. This season has already been magical, and that also gives us a lot of important context to what Monty McNair and the Kings do this upcoming offseason. Yeah, the only thing worse than the Kings getting swept in the first round of the playoffs is the Kings getting swept in the first round by the Lakers in the playoffs. Well, I don't think which, you're going to have to worry about the yeah, Lakers. Yeah, Lakers are just fighting to get in there. At any rate, Matt talked about fourth quarter Fox. Well, Matt is on his fifth quarter right now. We're because both are. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, we're in overtime. It's we're, 1 a.m. here. Exactly. We're this at 1 a.m. in the Golden One Zone. Absolutely. You know, we're the last people to leave. But if you can't, still can't get enough of your Kings content, and when you finish watching this, you want more, the Locked On Kings podcast hosted by Matt George right here. You can see it. It's on uh, ABC 10 Plus. It's on Roku. It's on pretty much any streaming device that you, you could find it. It's all over the place. So be sure to tune into that for your daily Locked On Kings content. Once again, from Golden One Center, I am Kevin John. This is Matt George. And just for more information, you can always go to ABC10.com.